Hello, I am Mr. Fixit from ES Repair. In this video, I will show how to add your email account to Windows Mail. Windows Mail is a basic email client application that is suitable for most users, providing a simple solution to managing emails. Now, Windows Mail supports multiple email accounts for those who need separate accounts for different purposes, and it also keeps each account separate. Before you can add your email account, decide if the account only needs access by one device, or if the account needs access from multiple devices. For example, uh, if this PC is the only device to access my email account, then I can use a post office protocol, or POP. This protocol downloads the emails to my PC and then deletes them from the server at the end of the task. This protocol does have its benefits. You have access to your emails regardless of internet availability and store as many emails on your PC as you so desire. However, if the PC was to crash, you can lose all those emails without a backup. And you can only access your emails on that device. An alternative would be the Internet Message Access Protocol. IMAP was created to allow remote access to email stored on a remote server. Now, this allows multiple clients or users to manage the same inbox. So whether you log in from your home PC, your smartphone, your tablet, or even your work computer, you will always see the same emails and folder structure because they are stored on the server and all changes that you make on your local copies are immediately synced to the server. IMAP is the better choice if you have a reliable and constant internet connection, need access to the emails on multiple devices, and if you are worried about backing up the emails. This will come in handy, so if something did happen to your computer, you can still have access to those emails. Next, you will need the names of the incoming mail server and the outgoing mail server with the port numbers used for communications with that server. Now, this information can be obtained by the service provider. For example, Comcast's in incoming mail server is imap.comcast.net, or you can use pop3.comcast.net. And their outgoing email server is smtp.comcast.net. The default ports for POP are 110, which is an unsecured connection, and 995 for a secure connection. IMAP uses 143 for unsecured connections and 993 for secure connections. SMTP, which is short for Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, uses port 25 for unsecured connections, while 465 is used for secure connections. Now, note that not all service providers will use these ports, so you want to be sure that you do check with your service provider to know which ports to use for making a secure connection. Do not use the port if it's an unsecured connection. Always use a secure connection. If your email is from Gmail, Yahoo, or perhaps Hotmail, Windows Mail can make setting up your email a breeze. Once you get the information required, then you can go ahead and open Windows Mail. Now, when you open it, you're going to come to a window like this. Um, as you can see, it's got a variety of different types of email accounts that you can add. Uh, you have Outlook.com, Office 365, Google, Yahoo, iCloud, and of course, you can do the manual one down here. Uh, if you have something like Comcast, uh, Mediacom, or uh, Xfinity, um, which I think is Comcast, uh, you have uh, Cox Cable and uh, AT&T, SBC Global, and so forth. Um, you may have to do it manually, and I'll show you how to do that here momentarily. Now, if you have something like Google, Yahoo, and Hotmail and stuff, um, all you have to do is just click on the icon that you need. Uh, in this case, I need Google because I'm going to open up, uh, add the Gmail account. 
it's going to connect to the service. Now, once it comes up to this window, you could do one of two things. Uh, you can either create a new account. Uh, if you haven't got one already, you can also create one. Uh, or if you do have one, all you need to do is type in your email and click Next. Next, you can uh, type in your password. Now, if you have any trouble with getting into the account, you can always select Forgot Password. So let me go ahead and type in my password. Now, when you sign into it, you can get in from something like this, which is normal because Google is just wanting to make sure that you are the one that's accessing the account and not some scammer or hacker. Once you have completed the verification process, uh, you're going to come to this uh, window or this screen. And this is to let you know that Windows, which is your computer here, is wanting to access your Google account. And you're going to see your email address that's in question. Uh, it's going to ask you uh, everything that it's going to require. Uh, reading, compose, and permanently, blah, 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 blah. And if you are trusting the software that is requesting access to your account, which in this case is Windows Mail. Uh, if everything holds true, then just click Allow. Now it's going to ask you how do you want them to send your emails and what name so I'm just going to type my name and then choose sign in now once it's completed you're going to see that it's all done uh, the account was set up successfully and it also shows that you can also get the app uh, to install on your phone and stuff like that and once you're finished you just click done and it's automatically going to uh, connect to your server and then it's going to download your emails. So as you can see, when you're doing stuff like Google and Yahoo and so forth, then it's pretty simple. You just sign into the account. You may have to verify the account and make sure it's you that's signing in and then go through the process as I just showed you and you have access to your email. Now, by default, Gmail, Hotmail, and Yahoo uses IMAP, which is the best um, option to use because it synchronizes your emails on all your devices. This means you can access your emails from any device, uh, as I described earlier. And this is pretty much how you uh, can set up a Gmail account or a Yahoo. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, as you can tell. Next, I am going to show you how to set it up manually if you're using a different type of an account to where you have to manually enter the information needed. Uh, to do that, uh, of course, we're going to come back to the added account. Uh, you want to scroll all the way to the bottom and you're going to see advanced setup. You'll go ahead and click on that. Uh, this is going to ask you uh, what type of advanced setup we're doing. Uh, we're going to do internet email. Now on this one, it's going to ask you for your email address, the username. Uh, this can be an email or it could be a, um, a username that the service provider ga uh, gave you. Um, it, you'll have to ask them exactly which one to use. Uh, it does show examples down here at the bottom as to what it could be, but do check with your uh, service provider to find out what the username would be. Uh, of course, you'll do your password. Uh, you can name the account, uh, so when you sign up, and then it's going to show the account name for that. So you can put like business or work or whatever you want to call it. Uh, then down here you have the name you want to appear when you send emails. Uh, here you'll put in the incoming email server, which as you can see here, I chose imap.gmail.com. Uh, this wants to know what kind of a, account this is. Uh, when you click on it, it's going to give you a POP3 or IMAP. Uh, the 3 is just shows a version of the protocol. Um, POP3 is version 3, IMAP4 is version 4. Uh, then, of course, you type in the outgoing mail server. Once you get that done, um, you're going to have options down here at the bottom. Uh, now, by default, you should just go ahead and leave these checked. 
uh, just choose outgoing server does require authentication. Uh, you want to use the same user and name as password because by default, most of these, and I haven't seen one that did it differently, but usually the incoming and outgoing emails servers use the same username and password. Uh, and down here, of course, you want to make sure that these two chat boxes are marked because you want to use uh, secure connections to your email and incoming and outgoing servers. Once you've verified the information, click sign in. Once it's finished, uh, you're going to come to this box again. And of course, you know, you can show that everything was successful and then just click done. Over here, you'll see all your accounts and you'll see right here where I named this one email demo. And then it shows the email address for the account and it shows the number of emails that I've received. When you click on it, uh, you'll see all your folders, uh, your inbox, drafts, sent, everything, and it will keep them all um, synchronized for you. And then if you have more than one account, you can just select the account that you want, and then each one of them is kept separate. And as you can see, these are all the um, emails that I've received so far. So as you can see, it's pretty simple, straightforward. Uh, just be sure that you do get the necessary information from the service provider, and then just enter the information as I showed you here, and then you'll have your email set up. Well, this concludes this video. Uh, this hope this video helped you understand how to simply set up your Windows Mail using either Google, Yahoo, iCloud. Uh, most of those are pretty simple to do. They're straightforward. Just sign in and it sets it up automatically. Uh, if you have something like uh, Comcast, um, uh, Cox Cable, ATT, blah, 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 then if you do require a manual way, be sure that you get the, uh, the type of the account that it is, whether it's POP3 or IMAP4, uh, the name of the server, and you're going to need the account information and your sign-in information so you can set up Windows Mail. Well, I'm your host, Mr. Fixit. Thank you for watching.